So I entered 2008 with a focus on building a winning culture at the company and figuring out uh, how to embed continuous improvement uh, within the company. Now, to be honest, I said that I thought the problem was a broken culture. I had no idea how to shape a culture in 10,000 people. I hardly knew what that meant. I sensed that was the problem, but I didn't know what to do about it. I remember going off to experts and talking about that culture. It wasn't very helpful. I also learned some things about continuous improvement uh, that were foundational, in particular one principle, which I didn't understand at first. The principle was uh, at its core, uh, continuous improvement must have a deep respect for the dignity of people. As a person brought up through the hard side, I sort of understood that, but it, not really. Maybe a cruder interpretation of that would be if you want to ask people for their best energy and creativity and focus, you want them to bring your best to you, you have to be for the best in their future, or it's not a fair exchange. Or put even more crudely, you can't ask people to come and bring productivity and efficiency to your company and then say, thank you very much, by the way, we don't need you anymore, so see ya. That's an exchange that really doesn't work, whether you're running a company or a sports team or a symphony orchestra. Great energy and great commitment lead to uh, great results. The people only give their best energy, their discretionary energy, to things that they believe in, things that they care deeply about, or perhaps things that they love. And so the first job of leaders is to create a company or an enterprise that people are proud of, uh, that people believe in, and perhaps even people love. And so uh, that's why I, I say, looking back, that I learned over time that it really is the soft side of business that is the hard side and the most important side of what we do. We continue to study uh, solar and wind technologies, continue to evolve and advance. Natural gas, which was once thought to be running out, is plentiful and very low carbon combination of those two gives us the ability to really move on this. So what's interesting now and something I tell you can spread the word on is uh, I don't look back at the clean power plan uh, being set aside as any issue because we're going to blow by it so quickly and so far that uh, it's going to surprise people. So the clean power plan asked for us to be down about 30 percent by 2030. We've committed to be down 50 by 2030. There was no long-term portion of the clean power plant, but we've committed to be down 80 10 years later. Uh, and we won't be unique in the industry. Uh, the industry is flipping. The electric industry is from, we should be worried about climate change to a realization that actually this is a tremendous opportunity to do what we do, which is invest in infrastructure, clean infrastructure to create the future. And if the world is going to decarbonize, it's going to be by electrifying. So this, this in many ways is, yeah. Uh, it's a tremendous opportunity uh, for the industry uh, to grow and be part of something exciting.